Hi, we're Alt Lab Controllers, and in today's video, we're going to show you an update to our remap software. This update brings the software to version 1.10, which just completes most of the advanced functionality of the software. Please keep in mind that if you have not watched our last video, please go ahead and do so as the last video covers some of the basic functionality and we're only going to be showing more of the advanced functionality in today's video. Now, the first uh, revision that we added was actually a user request. Uh, we actually now allow you to disable the start button. And this is useful if you want to, let's say you're in a tournament setting and you don't want to accidentally press the start button, you know, kind of like a tournament lockout feature that you find in some other arcade sticks. We now added that to the software. So you can now, you know, unmap start. And if you hold the toggle button, you can have start, you know, mapped as well. It's your, your choice, depending on how you want to have your buttons. This is also useful if you're in USB mode because you can, you know, in USB mode, you're going to have access to uh, the start button. Uh, the minus button, home, capture, you can go ahead and find those however you'd like. So for USB Profile 2, this is my traditional fighting game layout. What I have set by default is for the start button to be mapped, but when I hold the toggle button, this is going to change to home. And then I also have select or, or you know, depending on the console, minus, I also have that map just for training features while toggle is enabled. So, you know, it's pretty, pretty useful and also help the save, but help save the buttons by having start remappable, which is pretty nice. Now, uh, you'll see we have some new placeholder images, which is pretty nice. Uh, this also allows you to have an easier time in this update to be able to know which direction your analog sticks are set. The last update was kind of hard to tell, but in this one, it's pretty easy. You can see that I have the right stick set to up, left, right, and then down as well. Now, the big thing that we did with this revision is completing the advanced functionality. So uh, within the advanced settings, you have now complete control of you know sharing your profiles. You can now import, export your profiles so you can share them with your friends or the community. And if you ever make a mistake, you can also just reset those profiles back to their default settings. Now, the cool thing about the, the profile sharing here is that they're not actually tied to the profile that you created. So I'll kind of elaborate what I mean. Let's say that I made a profile, so for USB profile one. If I go ahead and share that to my friend and he comes to his software and he imports it, he can choose to import that on USB profile one, two, or three. So even though I originally made this profile on profile one, whoever imports it has the choice of importing it to profile one, two, or three. So that's pretty cool. Angles is also working here. And let me go ahead and change the GameCube mode because that's a better example, at least for what I have set. Uh, you know, you can go ahead and set your angles here, which is pretty, you know, it's pretty intuitive. If I want to have a diagonal C-stick angle, so let's say I'm playing, uh, let's say I'm playing melee, and I press up and right at the same time, C-stick up and right, that is. Um, based on the angle that I have set, I'm going to get a forward angled smash, uh, forward smash in game. You know, and same thing if you're playing ultimate, if I had my right stick set to, um, to uh, tilt stick, you know, I'd, I'd get a forward angled uh, forward tilt in that in that case. So, you know, you have a lot of creativity based on how you want to play. Keep in mind that this is only affected, the, these settings, if you have an analog stick set to buttons. So this will never affect your joystick, only when an analog stick is set to buttons. Now, let's go ahead and uh, come to triggers here. I'm going to also use the Game Crew Profile 1 because this is my melee mode, or at least this is a profile I have set for melee. Uh, for this one, you have create, uh, creative control of what you want to do with the triggers. So right now, I have the right shoulder button, or I just you know just R. I have the set as my light shield. So normally, whenever I'm playing, I'm not going to get the hard press. It's, you see the click is off. I'm only going to get the soft press. So this is the analog pull here. This just means that whatever value I set, this is going to be my my right trigger value. So in this case, I'm getting a light shield because. For melee, I want to make sure that R is set to light shield so I don't activate my tech window in game. Uh, so I can just go ahead and keep that there. However, if I want to go ahead and quit, you know, if I hit uh, LAR start, you're unable to quit in game if you're using a light shield. You have to actually have that click enabled. Or I, not. it doesn't necessarily have to be enabled. You just have to meet a certain threshold for the game to detect you actually pressing R for for, for quitting in the, in the menu. So what I ended up doing here is on toggle, 
whenever toggle is enabled, you're now going to get that hard press and the value is going to be is going to be increased. So it's going to meet that threshold. And the cool thing about the value is that we actually base these values off of a real GameCube controller. So we sat down and, you know, punched numbers in to try to make sure that we can make this as close as possible to a, what a real GameCube controller would, would have. Now for the last change, this is for the USB labels. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we have some placeholder images here uh, at the moment if you're in the wrong setting. So some of these advanced settings are tied to a specific console. So for this one here, this only works in USB mode. So let's go ahead and make sure we're in a USB mode here. So whenever you're in a USB mode, if you want to change what the labels look like, you can go ahead and do that. So right now by default, you're going to be working with the Nintendo Switch icons. And same thing with the with the profiles here. Um, however, if you're using a converter, you know, let's say I'm playing, I want to play on the PlayStation 4 with a, a Brook converter. Well, I can go ahead and now change that here. And the reason why you, you want to do that, or at least why it's beneficial, you don't necessarily have to do it, but the reason why it's beneficial is, you know, a lot of these buttons change. So if I'm here, if, if I'm set using the Nintendo Switch icons and I'm set, have this set to, you know, button A, B, X, Y, when I come down and change that to PS4, you're going to notice that these are going to change. You know, uh, they're not actually following the same exact, um, uh, I guess, button positions. They actually rearrange based on the uh, identifiers of the controller themselves. So it's really helpful to just know that when you're working with your profiles and you're going to use on a specific console, you can actually make your profile match that as well, just to make it a little bit easier. But all in all, that's pretty much it for this update. Um, all the advanced functionality is working, uh, pretty much all the core functionality of the software is working at this moment. Um, what we're going to be moving forward uh, in terms of development next for the software is just kind of more minor bug fixes, making sure that as things pop up, we're able to fix them here and there. And then we're going to actually start working on the cross-platform support. So you'll be able to start using this on Linux and Mac in the future. Uh, thank you so much uh, for watching, guys. Hope you guys are excited to use it. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you.